Hey guys, it's Dorian. Uh, I wasn't going to do a video today, but I just got a, a new microphone. It's the Blue Snowball. Um, I know my last videos were a little quiet and they weren't very clear with my last microphone, so I thought I'd do myself and do you guys a favor and pick up a new one and uh, you know, hopefully you hear me a lot better now. It's a lot clearer. I also find YouTube was lowering the volume all the time whenever I would upload. So I would try re-uploading and it just kept knocking my volume down for some reason. I don't know if there was clipping, but anyways, uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, the video today um, is about comments I've been getting in uh, forums and message boards. And that's one thing that I wanted to say. Um, I, I like getting the feedback when I post my videos in the forums or on, on Twitter and whatnot. Um, but if you guys could ask your questions and comments on YouTube if you have a YouTube account that would be awesome just because more people see it so instead of you know wherever I'm posting these videos asking your, your questions and getting answered there um, you could do it all in one place all on YouTube um, so some of the questions I've been getting um, are about how my desktop looks and uh, I just want to clear up confusion first of all because sometimes I post screenshots of other desktops that I'm trying so I'm just going to show you real quick uh, some of your alternative options and uh, they're all using Ubuntu and I just added to them so this is um, I'm just going to start this up this is Ubuntu with uh, the budgie desktop installed uh, a lot of these custom desktops, well not custom, but um, Ubuntu used to be Unity and GNOME and now they've dropped Unity, now it's just GNOME. Um, but there's other desktops available that you can also install on Ubuntu, but usually you need to add the PPAs for it. Um, so let's say you wanted to install the Budgie desktop, so you go just Google like Ubuntu Budgie desktop install. If you don't know what a PPA is, it's like a it's a repository where your system is going to find all your files. So you can see right in here, they tell you how to add the repository, and then you just update it, and then you can install your uh, desktop environments. So yeah, this right here is one example. This is called the Pantheon desktop. Uh, elementary OS uses it. This is another version of Linux. It's very pretty. Um, does the job. It has a dock at the bottom. You can add whatever you want. Um, you know, battery, little notification area. Um, now, if you followed my videos, I have. Um, my number one video where you install a display manager. So I'm just going to log out here, show you what I mean. So this is the display manager, it's your login screen. Now if you followed along my number one video, the first one that I did, um, we installed a display manager and then open box and then all the different parts to make a desktop. This is what you need uh, to have this little option here where you can load different desktops. Um, if you followed my video number three, I think it was, which was the even lighter desktop, we didn't install this. So you don't have this easy option to change this. So uh, install your display manager, then you'll have this option. So like I said, with the PPAs, you just add the different PPAs, you go into your terminal, you install the different desktops, and when you log out, you'll have these different options. So this is the Pantheon that we were just in. Uh, it's elementary OS. And then there's Budgie Desktop. I'll show you that right now. So these are not ones that I custom made from scratch or anything. These are ones that I just downloaded and installed. So when I'm posting screenshots, it's not always mine. Uh, I like to keep mine quite simple and I'll get back to that after. 
but I like Budgie. Um, this is just uh, a dock. It's like the same type of dock that I always use. So it's, it's not really part of the, the OS. Um, so this is Budgie and it's got its uh, taskbar at the top, which some like, some don't like. You can move it to the bottom, but uh, when you open up your little applications menu and you know your little things here, they show up at the bottom. Right here, let me just see if I can change this here. So, panel settings, bottom. So you see now it's at the bottom, but sometimes when you click on things, of course it's not going to do it now. But I find sometimes when you click on things, they pop up at the top of the screen for a second and then jump down to the bottom because it was designed to be at the top, I think. Um, but this has a neat little tray with your notifications. You get new mail notifications and whatnot. I enjoy Budgie, but uh, like Pantheon, it uses quite a bit of memory, right? Like. There's nothing running and we're using 950 megs, almost a gig of RAM. So, you know, uh, there you see. Oh, it's not going to do it again, but it popped in from the top for a second. So I'm going to log out here. And i got one more to show you here, and it's i3. I, uh, i3 is okay but it's definitely not for everyone. So this is i3. There's a background, you can't click on it, you can't do anything. You can see at the very bottom here, you've got some system information or whatnot. So nothing's really running, but you do, uh, you, you need a mod key like Alt or your Windows key, which you set when you install it. I have, my, I have it set as my Windows key. So everything is keys. So like my Windows key enter opens the terminal. And even this really minimal system where you doesn't really, it has a window manager, but it's not meant for a mouse. It's meant for a keyboard. Um, we're already using 209 megabytes for this very minimal system. It's okay, but I mean, you could have a lot more running than this. Um, so let's exit this. To start programs in i3, you'd hit hold Windows key and D. And then you can see at the top, you know, if you want Chrome, you just start typing it. And then hit enter. And it starts up. And you want to open another one. And let's say the file manager. It does a little like split screen and you can switch back and forth. You hold your mod key and your left and right arrows. Uh, you hold the mod key and F and it goes full screen. It's not, it's not for everyone. If you want to play with it, uh, feel free, but I'm, I'm not a fan. Uh, people say it's for, you know, being a lightweight, uh, other people say it's because it's so much easier on the keyboard. Personally, I'd rather have a lightweight, GUI interface. And you can always add your keyboard shortcuts later. And if you get stuck in here, like, you need a cheat sheet. So, like, here I have to hold the Windows key, Shift, and E to exit, right? And then you click on Exit and go back to the login screen. So, not for everyone. Uh, it's up to you if you want to give it a try, but have a cheat sheet ready. Um, what else? So, anyways, I'll, I'll get into mine now. So th those were some of the screenshots I posted where people thought, oh, what did you do to your desktop? It looks so cool. And they had just never seen Pantheon or... Um, 
i3 or budgie before i guess so yeah this is now what mine looks like after more customization this is the one that i recorded myself installing i've just done more customization and theming and i added conky you can see the time and you know using 235 megs of ram hard drive space yada 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 uh, let's see what were some of the questions here oh right the themes so themes can be installed it can be downloaded from lots of websites just google open box themes and you find all these files that are obt extensions you just download those and then you can install them um, see so like mine here it's just a flat gray i like it i don't like super colorful crazy but um if i go into my preferences i can show you some of the others so we added this customized look and feel uh, in my earlier videos is under applications preferences here but it's also in this menu up here that i added to, to the desktop um, so yeah, under window borders, I downloaded some extras, like I think this is the default. So if you hit apply, yeah, that's the default, just this blue. And there's tons. They have all kinds of crazy ones. I don't know, I personally like this one, it's called Mistral. It's simple, it's easy on the eyes. And with this, this is where you would install a new theme. So you just click that, go find your theme. See, here's one that I downloaded. It's called 1977, and it ends in OBT. Once you click on that, it'll add it here. Like, you see, it added them all here. So then I can pick whichever one I want. Um, the title bar tab here. You can see I don't have a maximize button. I took it out. It used to be there so you now I have oops I don't like this so now I have a maximize button but honestly I don't need it because if I, I just double click the bars and it just you know makes it more um, minimalist I guess um, I also added a whole bunch of different widget themes which you can also download from uh, gnome look I don't know there's, there's a whole bunch of websites if you just google like open box themes you'll find them all um, I prefer this one it's Windows 10 master I don't think it looks like Windows 10 maybe it's just the color theme I don't know but you can see like the gray here yeah I just I prefer it almost like washed out um, and then icon themes this is the paper theme which I really like uh, again there are tons of themes and it just changes it, it changes everything including uh, what you see in your your dock but this won't change until you've logged out and logged back in um, but this one here called paper I really like it it's flat it's simple it has uh, support for a lot of the applications yeah okay so that um, what else oh plank someone was asking about plank plank themes Oh wait, first let me show you where to get these themes, or where to put them. If you have the .obt file, you can um, just import them with the customized look and feel, install the theme. Uh, if it's a zip file, if you go Control h to show all your files in your home folder, go to your .themes and drop it in here so it'll be a folder with the name of the theme 
and then inside that you will have your GTK themes, Meta City, Open Box, whatever that particular theme supports will be inside that one. Um, but Plank, <clears throat> Plank, I don't know why they did this. Uh, speaking of, I used to use Docky. I don't know if you noticed in the last video. Now I'm using Plank. I found it's a little lighter, it's a little nicer. And um, if you hold Control and right click anywhere on Plank, you get a little menu for preferences. And here you can change where it's going to be, uh, how it behaves, the icon, zoom, and whatever. Intellihide is what you want, by the way, in case you, you don't know it. It knows when to hide and when not to hide. Um, but yeah, under appearance, there's all these themes. And it's not very clear where they go. So I don't know why they put them here, but in your home folder, you're gonna go into your dot local, share, plank, themes. Why they didn't just put it in the dot themes folder, I don't know, they wanted to have their own, I don't know. So basically in this themes folder is the name of the theme and then there'll be a doc.theme file inside. Um, what else was there? Who was asking about OB menu? Um, someone noticed that my menu when I right click on my desktop has uh, little icons next to it. Well, if you run OB menu, which I'm pretty sure we installed in one of my last videos. If not, uh, then it's just sudo app install OB menu. And when you run it, you can run it in terminal, whatever, uh, you'll get this. This is your menu. And yeah, I remember showing you guys I had my reboot and shutdown scripts um, so that when I say shut down, it just pops up and asks, do I really want to shut down? Yes or no. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, you have your applications, file manager, task manager, and then within open box, you know, customize it however you want, but there's nowhere to do these little, put these little icons. Those little icons, you need a, well, you, you can use leaf pad. You need some kind of editor. I'm just using Genie here so that you guys can see clearly because I can zoom that right in. <clears throat> All right, so looks a little intimidating at first, but um, it's in uh, XML format. And basically, uh, I have my, my pipe menu for the open box applications here. And all I did was add icon equals and the location to it, all right? And then when you have, uh, let's see what else, file manager, right? I added file manager in this OB menu program. Once you do all that, you save, you can open this file and then just find, um, Uh, where is it? File manager, right? Label equals file manager. Item icon equals, that's where the system file manager image is, the little filing cabinet picture here. Same thing with task manager, icon equals, it's just adding that. So you have your whole item, the action, you know, it's gonna execute. Uh, you're gonna see this and then you're not gonna have an icon next to your thing so just add icon equals and then it's done all right so that's that's that for OB menu uh, what else is there oh right um, my tint two themes I don't know what else. Yeah, my tint two themes. So I have at the bottom of my screen 
my taskbar here and I set it up so that all the icons are that aren't active are faded and barely visible and then the ones that are active are bright. Um, this is just a task or sorry not a task a tint to theme. Go in your applications preferences tint to panel settings I made a whole bunch of themes just trying to play with it. I had, you know, this purpley one. I had this one. I did one with launchers, you know, so you can open programs from here. But this was pretty redundant when I already have my dock. And uh, then I finally made this completely black one with the. Uh, faded icons. That was easy to do. If you go to edit your theme and this put my launcher back which I'm going to get rid of because I hadn't saved it. Uh, under task buttons over here you set your default styles. Make sure these checkboxes are checked. Um, you know, set your font color the opacity is how transparent it's going to be, so set it low to like 30, and then your saturation and brightness, put them at negative values, so it kind of fades them out like that. And then your active task, make sure uh, it's set, your opacity is 100, and these are zero, so it overrides, so it makes your, your icons and your text nice and bright. I also made the font color kind of a limey green. It just stands out a little more. <clears throat> So yeah, there's that. Oh, I wanted to get rid of my launcher. <clears throat> launcher, get rid of that. Um, what else did I have? Oh, I have uh, you know, my mail. Close that, and then you have a little icon here. This will change into a number if I have a new mail. Um, Dropbox, if you go to the Dropbox website, you can install uh, Dropbox so it syncs with your account, which is here. Make a Dropbox folder and it synchronizes with, with everything online. Um, oh, hide. Hide hidden files. Um, yeah, I got open office set up, it opens Word documents, nice, I've got PyCharm, I have Spotify, I've got everything that I need now, and I use this on my, my other laptop uh, pretty regularly, and the reason that I still have this virtual machine is that it's good for testing and uh, it it's easier for me to record video on this because I can shut down and reboot and without you know using recording software in Linux um, so what was the other thing ah I had a desktop set up a certain way because I want to try something different. Um, the XFCE4 panel um, along with a program called Maximus. Get rid of Tint2. Alright, save that. I'll just show you. It's easier for me to just show you uh, what it looked like and what people were asking about. And let's change this theme to Numix. All right. So right now I've got my taskbar along the bottom. You know, everything's normal. I'm going to show you something kind of cool that you can do. I've been shutting down and starting up again instead of rebooting because uh, I updated VirtualBox and I don't know, some, every now and then it hangs on a reboot and I don't understand why. I just found shutting down and 
opening up again just works better. So now you can see my taskbar is now at the top and I have a little icon with my programs in it, which is handy. But the cool thing about this, if you go to panel, panel preferences, these are things that you have to download separately and uh, add. This is X, XFCE4 panel. And I also added a program called Maximus. So I'll show you how that works later. Um, and I added a program called Top Menu. You have to download it separately. It's not really supported anymore, but it still works. And Window Header Buttons. If you uh, you just Google it, you'll find it on the Ubuntu forum, how to install it, how to get it running. I just wanted to show you um, what it does. So if I open the file manager here, you can see that there's no more menu bar. The menu is now up here. So it's very much like uh, uh, Mac OS X or uh, what Ubuntu was trying to do. Uh, Ubuntu's no more. But uh, yeah, so it's a different way of doing it. If you're if you like how max menus are always up there, then you know you can go this route. But the thing that I like about this is that it saves you a bit of screen real estate because you see there's the window uh, title bar up here. So if I maximize it, the title bar is gone. It's tucked in almost behind this menu. It, it disappears. And that's basically what uh, that Maximus program does. And you can see up in the top right corner, I've got my minimize, restore, and close buttons. So every time you maximize something, they show up up here. So I think that's kind of cool. So you see, like with LeafPad, like you have a full screen um, program. Uh, it, it saves you, you know, what, 32 pixels width, height. Um, and then you still have kind of like a little taskbar here. You can click your different programs to reopen them. Um, not all programs work. So like LibreOffice, it doesn't want to play. It keeps its uh, it keeps its menu where it is. It doesn't put it up there. But what can you do? So that's something cool that you can do. Um, and again, that's the XFCE four panel and Maximus. So let's go back to. I want to have my panel back, get rid of those. I'm commenting them out, by the way, that's what the, the hash is. And then save. And I'm gonna put my theme back to how it was. So yeah, that is about it. Um, I also want to show you, if you <clears throat> find you're getting way too deep into this and you want something lightweight, you have an old machine, I highly recommend Zubuntu, X-U-B-U-N-T-U. It's also very, very lightweight. It's quick on older hardware, uh, not quite as light as, say, building your own from scratches, but you know, it's nice, it's pretty, it, it, you can sort of customize it, and it has a, a GUI software center. So if you prefer something nice and easy like this, instead of, you know, doing the, doing the old terminal way, and gives Ubuntu a try, but, uh, you know, don't, don't give up too quick on, uh, making it your own because 
you can make something exactly how you want it. You tweak it, you customize it, you know, you adjust your colors, you find a cool icon theme, and um, I do get a lot of comments on this. Um, uh, I don't know if I mentioned in, in the top right there that it's called Conky. Uh, accessories, Conky Manager. Uh, Conky's been around for a very long time. I was using it. I'm pretty sure in the late 90s I was using it, if I recall. Um, but it has a whole bunch of things you can add on to your desktop. Um, yeah, you can edit it. I won't even go into it because that's that's a whole separate video. Uh, <laughs> but uh, give Conky a try. It's kind of cool. You don't really need it. It uses some memory, but I mean, it hardly uses any CPU. Um, yeah, that's about it. If you guys uh, have any more questions about anything else. Um, oh, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, one last thing was the shadows. The shadows. So, <clears throat> come on. The shadowing around the windows, which you can't see so much on a uh, dark background, but on a lighter background, it looks much nicer. That is the uh, compositor. So if you edit your auto start, which I showed you how to do in the first video, it is in uh, .config open box, and it's called either auto start or auto start.sh. This is the line that you edit. So xcomp mgr. Um, if you do dash dash help, you'll see there's a whole bunch of settings that you can play with, but um, this R, R9 is what dictates how big the shadow is going to be. So you can go crazy. Let's go crazy. All right. I'm going to go here. And first we have to kill it. Okay, I'm going to paste that and let's go with an R50. Now you have some huge, tall shadows. Now it, makes, it makes the window look like it's so much higher than the others. But the, uh, the higher you put that number, the more CPU you're using. If you're using newer hardware, it's not really an issue, but it's up to you. It's a matter of preference. Maybe you don't like it at all. You just want it flat, then just take this out completely. Um, all right, and another thing you'll notice, or someone noticed, they couldn't get their icon, their volume icon to look like mine. I was using Vaulty before, and now I've changed to PN Mixer. PN Mixer. Um, because if you go into the preferences, and where was it? Icon theme. There's a ton of icons you can pick from to make it look nicer and make it match your, uh, your desktop theme a lot better. So that's what I switched to. Uh, it just looks nicer. And then this is just clip it. It's a clipboard manager. Uh, no big deal. Um, other than that, yeah, that's about it. Um, you'll notice my RAM usage is a little higher than it was previously. Uh, but I'm also using Gnome Do. Um, if you type for me, it's Windows key space. You can just type whatever you want to launch. As soon as you start typing, it gives you a suggestion. You hit enter and it starts. Uh, it runs in the background. I've set it so that there's no system tray icon because it's purple and it's ugly and doesn't match my nice black uh, taskbar 
and system tray here. Um, but yeah, so I think that's about it. I think I've talked enough. Uh, if anyone else has anything else, I will jot it down and show you. But uh, yeah, this is yours to create however you want. And uh, that's it for now, I guess. So good luck and bash on.